Researchers from the University of Warwick and clinicians from University Hospitals Coventry and Warwickshire have collaborated on a project which could create a high-tech medical tool that provides a faster diagnosis for some of the most difficult gastrointestinal illnesses and metabolic diseases. Gas sensor technology currently used to analyse synthetic gases within premium car components has been applied to the study and testing of human blood and cattle excrement to locate volatile organic compounds. The volatiles or mixture of gases can be key to understanding the development of colonic disease. Uh, the motor industry are really uh, interested in the new car smell and how the public relate to that smell, but also uh, the other volatiles that are within the vehicle. Uh, there are certain regulations coming in from Japan and from Europe uh, which will limit the total volatiles. Uh, so the car companies are keen to get ahead of that regulation. The basic process is called thermal desorption gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Uh, and there we pull uh, a sample of air through a media and then desorb those volatiles which have uh, attached to that media through a gas chromatography mass spectrometry. And it gives us a very detailed uh, analysis of what chemicals are present and uh, what levels those chemicals are present at. What we've got here in, in this case is a, is a door inner. Uh, behind me is a, a meter cube chamber which is the industry standard for testing of components. We uh, place a sample, the component in here, heat it up, uh, draw off the volatiles uh, in, a, in a typical way uh, and that gives us a, an indication of what volatiles are, are coming off the component. We can test door inners like this or whole seats if need be for uh, large component testing. The basic process is, is very, very similar uh, for a material, it, it might be an organic material or it might be a, a piece of a vehicle. They emit volatiles in the same mechanism. Uh, to different levels and different chemicals, but the same mechanisms apply. We had an interest in, in bowel fermentation because we felt that the bacteria within the large bowel, specifically, uh, does in some way influence uh, uh, bowel health. And so uh, we were thinking of ways, uh, really, how we could measure this. Um, and in doing so, uh, casual conversation uh, with, with Dr. Williams uh, suddenly made us realise that there might be a potential in, 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 in doing so using techniques which was actually used and designed for car manufacturing. We started with uh, effectively easily uh, collectible uh, farmyard samples uh, because of uh, just from the simplicity uh, to prove the concept and that was uh, proved very quickly we could see immediately that there was certain significance to uh, uh, the different uh, animals and certain similarities which we thought was immediately interested that the uh, horse uh, and the cow both had a fairly similar uh, fingerprint. So we, uh, we have the uh, faecal sample in, uh, just in a small uh, aluminium cup just for ease of transport. We then uh, can place this uh, sample in uh, the microchamber, which is up to temperature uh, and has a, a clean air supply flowing through it. We can then close the microchamber and then seal it. Uh, the air supply is now being driven through uh, over the top of the sample and then into the uh, absorption media in the thermal desorption tube. Well, we've got the, uh, the samples uh, in the desorption tubes. We can then place them in the uh, thermal desorption rack, close the door, and then we can start the machine. Standard air sampling technology, thermal desorber. It heats the sample, uh, drives those volatiles uh, into a cold trap to uh, concentrate them, and then from the cold trap uh, through the transfer line, into the, onto the uh, GC column, the gas chromatography column, and then into the uh, mass spectrometer. Uh, we've shown uh, that the device can be applied to biological samples. We've then 
extended that obviously to, to human sampling of blood, urine and faeces and we've demonstrated the technique works quite well. We're able to show a degree of reproducibility that means a sample produced on one day we can get a similar sort of tracing repeated a week or, or two or three weeks down, down the line. We don't have any uh, baselines at all uh, as far as we can tell it's although breath sampling is a, a standard technique no one has really analysed the volatiles present in blood or urine or, or faecal samples to the depth that we're, we're proposing and, and, and we've achieved. And yet we're able to get uh, a wide range of, of possible uh, of a chromatogram which uh, we can then uh, go into, into a lot more detail to try and determine what's actually different between different disease groups. So that the applicability is, is unique in that sense but also the potential for an early diagnosis and also uh, for monitoring or treatment I is vast. Obviously we're looking at a feasibility stage at the moment uh, and we're doing some long-term sampling uh, of healthy individuals to see what the changes in these volatile traces are for a healthy individual. Obviously with uh, our links with Ramesh and the clinicians then we can start uh, taking samples from patients who are sick. And here, this process can be quite complicated. Uh, we have several ways in mind, but one of it, it would involve very complex uh, mathematics uh, involving artificial neural networks. And there we have Dr. Evo Hines, who works at Warwick University School of Mathematics and Engineering. Uh, and he has experience in such something quite similar to try and uh, devise software to try and help analyse these things. We would hope it would be, it would be a tremendous Im impact on, on patient care because it, the techniques we need to use to sample to get a diagnosis is, is non-invasive. All they require to produce is either urine or faecal samples. Uh, and yet, uh, from that, we're able to tailor and, and adjust their, uh, their treatment just based on that, really. So starting treatment early, picking up disease early, or monitoring treatment in a more sensitive and specific manner will have tremendous benefits on, on patient care. At the moment, we've been kindly supported by BRAC Charity, and we're very grateful for them, because otherwise, without them, really, we wouldn't have come this far. We've also recently got a small amount of funding from the WIMRC, which is part of the WMG Group, to fund Dr. Farrow uh, and with some degree of consumables but we're really looking constantly to other large grant holding bodies and charities to support our work otherwise without which uh, this whole project will, will not uh, really progress.